a reminder first from you know, in terms of what we said last week. From the Salk Institute website, um, we read a couple of excerpts as follows. In the new study, so they're, they're speaking about research that had just been published in, boy, I don't know, it's like Circulation Research, I think is the name of the journal. In the new studies, in the new study, the researchers created a pseudovirus that was surrounded by the SARS-CoV-2 classic crown of spike proteins, but did not contain any actual virus. Exposure to the pseudovirus resulted in damage to the lungs and arteries of an animal model, providing proving that the spike protein alone was enough to cause disease. Tissue samples showed inflammation, endothelial cells lining the pulmonary artery walls. And later in that same piece, they said this is the first study to show that the damage occurs when cells are exposed to the spike protein on its own. So since last week, we have been able to read the actual paper. And thank you again to the many of you who forwarded it. And also, I was just able to access it after, after our stream. Um, as well as a new statement from the authors um, in which they uh, say that they're clarifying what they think the implications of their work is, uh, as well as a blog post from a researcher in drug discovery uh, uh, who has a regular blog in science with his take. Um, and we've also noted changes to the Salk Institute's uh, news release, uh, which of which there's no indication on the site itself. They don't indicate that they've actually changed. The changes are present, but it is not acknowledged that there is a change. Right. And... Um, We'll 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 get to that. You know, it's, it's fairly common to change posts, um, but in this case, um, the the change was distinct enough that uh, if we hadn't actually shown my screen so that it was clear what was up at the time that we were talking about it, it would look like we had been disingenuous or even dishonest in our in well, our. It's always possible it. to miss something, but mm, not in this case. It was right at the top, um, so the the change is right at the top, and um, I have you know I have screenshots from last week and now to show. And in fact, there's now been an additional change. So, um, but we'll get there. Again, like I said, published in Circulation Research um, by a team of researchers, including some at the Salk Institute, titled SARS-CoV-2 Spike Protein Impairs Endothelial Function Via Downregulation of ACE2. And um, it's a short paper. It's a dense paper, um, you know, very short, very dense, really not sufficient to, um, you know, fully assess. Um, but I will... Uh, highlight and read this last uh, this last sentence in which they say, this conclusion suggests that vaccinated generated antibody and or exogenous antibody against S protein not only protects the host from SARS-CoV-2 infectivity, but also inhibits S protein imposed endothelial injury. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, thank you, Zach. Um, I also wanted to, before we start talking about um, about that, I will say that, that that from them, which is again the last sentence of their paper, in which they seem to say, yeah, you know, we don't think this has bad implications for the, the mRNA and DNA vaccines, which obviously, as we all know, code for the spike protein. Um, but it wasn't clear to me um, what that, why that sentence was there for, like what it followed from. Um, here is a statement. So, Zach, you can show my screen again. A statement from the authors that came out this week, um, which, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the third paragraph of which reads as follows. For COVID-19 vaccination, a small amount of the spike protein mRNA packaged in nanoparticles, Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna, or spike protein DNA carried by adenovirus, Johnson & Johnson, are delivered into humans through intramuscular injection. The spike protein mRNA or DNA, after translation to modified sp spike protein, then function as antigens to be recognized by antigen presenting cells for antibody production. So this is um, this is what we've been told. This is consistent with everything we've heard about the vaccines. This is from our uh, live stream last week from the Salk Institute site, in which you can see the top sentence reads: Scientists have known for a while that SARS-CoV-2's distinctive spike proteins help the virus infect its host by latching onto healthy cells. Now, a major new study shows that they also play a key role in the disease itself. 